Hi everyone, I am Yuhan Liu from Cornell University. I will be introducing our work on estimating sparse discrete distributions under privacy and communication constraints. This is joint work with Jared Afikaria, Peter Kairuz, and Zitong Sun. I will start with the motivation and background, followed by the problem setup. Then I will state the main results and introduce the algorithms for LDP and communication constraints. Finally, I will introduce the techniques for proving lower bounds. Our main motivation is that in distributed learning, access to original data may be restricted. For example, there may be privacy concerns or communication bandwidth may be limited. This usually leads to a significant increase in the number of samples required to fulfill the learning task. On the other hand, even though the data may potentially come from a very large domain, the items that actually appear may only come from a very small subset. Therefore, we wish to characterize the learning performance when the data is sparse. The problem that we are considering is the discrete distribution estimation problem. There is an S sparse distribution P over a domain of size K. But as sparse, we mean that the distribution has strictly positive probability mass on a set of sides S and zero everywhere else. There are a total of N users. Each of them has an RID sample from the underlying distribution P. Then each user may send a message through a local information constraint, which is basically a randomized function or a channel defined by the conditional probability of sending a message Y given an input X. The messages are sent to a server which tries to learn the underlying distribution using the messages received. One local information constraint we consider is the local differential privacy constraint, which basically says that for every pair of input X and X prime, the probability of outputting any message y should be almost the same. Another constraint we consider is the communication constraints. Each user may only send L-bit binary strings. The goal is that each user should choose a channel from a family of allowed channels and the server design an estimator such that for all as sparse distributions p, we can guarantee that the estimation error is at most alpha in terms of L1 distance or TV distance with high probability. We are interested in the sample complexity, which means that uh, the least number of users such that the a choice of channels and estimator exists. Now I will introduce the main results. Existing literature has shown that for both LDP and communication, the sample complexity increases quadratically with the potential domain size k. In our work, we showed that with S sparse assumptions for LDP, we obtain a sample complexity very similar to the non sparse one with k replaced by S and an additional factor of log k over S. For communication, we obtained a similar upper bound to the ones we obtained for LDP. The lower bound is not tight. However, it is optimal when we don't care about log factors, or it is also optimal when the accuracy parameter alpha can be viewed as a constant. The main message of our result is that when data is sparse, we need less samples to learn the distribution with desired accuracy. Now I will introduce the algorithms. I will start with the LDP scenario. In this case, we use the one-bit Hadamard response algorithm with an additional step of sparse projection. Uh, this is originally proposed by Akaria and Sun. The advantage is that it only uses one bit per user and requires no public randomness. It uses the Hadamard matrix, which is defined uh, in the definition shown on the slide with an example on the right. 
The idea is that we assign each user with a subset of the domain, which basically corresponds to a column of the hardware matrix. Then the user would send a privatized bit according to whether the sample belongs to the subset. Once an estimate p hat is obtained, we need a final projection step to make it a valid distribution. We show in our work that if we project onto the set of all S sparse distributions, we can obtain the sample complexity as we desired. Note that sparse projection can be done efficiently using an algorithm from the paper by Kirillidis et al. Another option is to project onto the set of KRE distributions. However, we are only able to show a sample complexity that has a log K dependence. Our theoretical analysis is verified by our experiment. We can see that with sparse projection, the estimation error is much smaller than the algorithm using regular projection. Regardless of the projection method, we can see that with smaller support size, the estimation error is much smaller. Now I will introduce the algorithm for L-bit communication. The communication scheme is a very simple protocol which uses public randomness to obtain hashing functions for each users. They're obtained independently such that given each symbol X, the output Y is chosen uniformly at random from the sets of all L-bit binary strings. Once the functions are assigned, each user would simply send the message using the hash function. To estimate the underlying distribution, the idea is that given a symbol x, we can compute the probability that the message yi equals to hi of x. It is an affine function of the probability mass p of x. To see this, if the sample is x, then regardless of the hashing function, the message would be equal to hi of x. If otherwise, then the two would match with probability one over two to the L. Then we can estimate P of x using the empirical estimate of this probability by inverting this affine function. The estimator in more detail consists of two stages. In the first one, we obtain an estimate of the support. Then we would estimate the probabilities of symbols inside the estimated support. Uh, for more details on stage one, for each symbol x, we obtain the count of the number of times that yi, the messages, matches with hi of x, the function output. Then we would simply select uh, 2s symbols with the largest count. We can guarantee that with high probability, the set that we have chosen contains pretty much most of the probability mass. In the second stage, we uh, compute a count very similar to the first step uh, for only the remaining set of messages. Once we have obtained the count, we, we naturally obtain an empirical estimate of the probability of yi equals hi of x, and then simply invert the affine function to obtain an estimate of p of x. The estimated uh, probabilities are close enough so that uh, we end up with an estimator with the desired success probability and accuracy. We did an experiment uh, for a different number of bits and varying support sizes. We can see that uh, similar to the plot for, L -bit, uh, for LDP, with smaller support size, the estimation area becomes much smaller. Finally, I will introduce the lower bound techniques. We basically applied the chi-square contraction method to a new uh, construction of family of distributions. These distributions are concentrated 
on one symbol with the remaining probability mass evenly distributed over a set of sides S. We parameterize this family by the sets of all vectors, uh, binary vectors of length k that has exactly S once. To obtain the lower bound, we form a Markov chain. We draw z uniformly at random from the calligraphic z. From this, we obtain n samples from p of z. Then the user may send their messages according to the samples received. We will first upper bound the mutual information between z and the messages. The bounds for LDP and communication are shown on the slide. Then we can apply the Fanos method. One remaining ingredient is the log n, where n is basically a packing number of the family of distributions. We can show that log of n is at least s times log k over s. Combining all the ingredients yields the desired lower bound. This is the end. Thank you very much for your attention. For more details, please check out our paper on archive.